Hey, everybody. This week's episode is brought to you by Sheath. I think you guys know how much we love Sheath underwear created by a... Uh, what do I got over here? Ex-veteran, uh, an nope. army guy. I don't have sheath on today. That's only because they're all dirty because I wore them for three weeks in a row. But I do love these underwear. They got a pocket for your dick and your balls, a pouch, if you will. Oh, yeah. Big and uh, this guy's just the best. He sends us nice stuff all the time, messages. They got lady clothes. My lady wears the box of briefs. They're white. I can see right through them. I get so horny. Ooh, I love that line, that vertical line. No, nah, she doesn't have one of those. But <sighs> sheath underwear is just the best. Get yourself some sheath right now. Oh, my, my thing fell off. Oh, jeez. My oh. underwear is still on. There you go. Tell Thank them how to get this, where to get it, the whole thing. You got to get sheet. I wear them every day. It's all I wear. They've, they've blown out my other, uh, I don't want to say what brand, but my other panties. Those are all gone with the wind. It's all sheath all the time. They're the best. They look the best. They feel the best. They smell the best before I put them on. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code TUESGAYS. To get 20% off your first order and Sheath Underwear's 100% money back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code TUESGAYS. Whoop, we got a fire sale. Get Sheath Underwear and let them support your balls today. Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe Liss. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. Yeah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tuesdays with Stories. We are back. In the Lunch Stuff Studios here in uh, fabulous Greenwich Village, which is on fire right now, currently. Literally on fire. It's lit. I think two blocks away is a uh, bar is on on fire, and it's uh, right uh, right in our earshot. We got the window open, so you might hear a couple sighs. You might even see some smoke. I think it's a, a residential. I went down there. It's on Bleecker. Yep. And uh, it is just heavy, pouring smoke. It's a scene out there. There's like hot women, and then really? across the way, there's like women on the street. I took a photo of it. I'll post it on the uh, Instagram. Yeah. Ah. Well, Patreon. Who's joining to see a photo? Really? Good point. I mean, if it was my mother's tits, maybe you'd get a couple subscribers and you'd lose a few. So it would uh, it'd be a wash. The, we'd lose the gaze, but uh, I'd jump in. <laughs> Now, it's weird because we have a Patreon, which everyone should join it. I mean, this thing is hot and cooking. We got a three-camera shoot. We brought in this fella, uh, Chuck uh, D or Knobloch or Finn, whatever his name is. Chuck. No Chuck idea what cheese. his name is. He's got spiky hair, and he's a little gay, but... Big homo. He's doing crazy stuff with the video, the ones and twos, and he's making some crazy footage for us. Yes. But what's crazy is I've never gone to Patreon.com. I don't know what it looks like. I don't know what's on there, who's on there. We create it. We send it off to Shelby and or Chuck, and they slap it up there. And uh, next thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. You got that right. I'm scared to look. I like that it's up there. You guys figure it out. I, I don't go in any of that stuff. I can't go to Reddit. I went to Reddit once. I felt like I was on the black market. I didn't know what was all these ticks and twigs and numbers and swoops, boxes and threads. It's too much. Every once in a while, not every once in a while, every 10, 20 minutes, I'll Google, you know, uh, hip pain, leg arm, you know, eyeballs, bloodshot asshole. And then sometimes one of the things that will show up is a Reddit forum. Uh -huh. And even there I go in and I'm frightened of that. Yeah, the links, are, they look like something out of Greek mythology. There's all symbols and an eyeball with an exclamation and a dildo and an eggplant. It's it's too kooky. I hate it. Eyeball chambers. And there's that little guy with the black head and the little telescope out of his face. What's that Jews? logo? Wait, what? The logo is like a... It's a guy's head with a little straw, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. I never caught it. It looks something like that. Right straw when you go head. there. The the front of it. it looks like Stewie Griffin with like a periscope. Oh, I never never uh, checked out the logo. I got to go back on maybe. Let me, let me pull it up because I, I, I might it, be crazy. With one eye closed, I'm looking through my hand. I can't stand it because it, it's so mean. Reddit.com. Let me look. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yes. Exactly. That's, That's right. That's yeah. right. It's a little red uh, alien guy. And it wants you to go on the app, but I always go Safari. And That's then it's what just, I do. it pops up popular. What's dangers? But 
Look at that. It's so it's so primitive looking. It looks like DOS in 88. It's too much, but I, I haven't been on there since the 40s because Luis J. Gomez, who's a big, crazy animal, you can't even hurt this guy. Puerto Rican. Seven years ago, he was like, I went on Reddit for a while. I had to get off Reddit. It was hurting my feelings. And wow. I was like, Jesus. If he's getting off, I don't want to be right. Yeah, forget it. So uh, no Reddit for me, but... We tried to check our Patreon uh, digits recently, and I just saw like 48 comments, 23 comments. I'm like, I-, I can't look at those fucking things. Yeah, I do the Facebook page, and that's enough. Nah, I don't go anywhere near that either. It's too too hurtful, too much of a dick in the butt. Well, the problem is they talk about you like you're a, an action figure or a queef or a, or a celebrity who's never going to see it. Like I remember when Ari Shafir went on a podcast and railed against a big celeb. I'm not yes. going to say who. He heard it and just said, hey, what are you, and confronted him at the club. He's like, what are you doing? Yeah, and well. he was like, oh, I never thought you'd hear that. Yeah, it's a, it's a topsy-turvy, wacky world, and it's unpleasant, and I always feel that way when people yell and talk and shout, and you're like, uh, that's out there. Public. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Ooh, now, I'm, now I'm backtracking every Tom, Dick, and Anal I've plugged and poked and jizzed on it's a little tricky a little scary i've thought that before like what if we really blow up and then i'm at my nephew's soccer game and then they're like there he is that's the kid that made three hundred and fifty thousand kid fucking jokes and then they chase oh. me out of there like borat at the uh, rodeo <laughs> yeah was that the one where he was naked i can't remember but i, mean, I know he was this in one danger he's, he's running crabbing his, his genitals out of a hotel room with a fat guy oh i think that was dc wasn't it? i know he went a little crazy down there. Yeah, yeah. He's a kooky guy and, a, and an odd duck. I mean, he makes fun of everybody to their face, puts them on in the movie, and then he's like, I'm a hero. I give to the to the AIDS fund <laughs> or whatever. You're like, well, which one is it? Are you right. mean to, to rednecks or are you a hero? Yeah, it's a little interesting, a little spicy. And uh, who knows? He's got his own thing. He's got, there's a whole other thing going on with that guy. I might sneeze. It might be the cat. Oh. <laughs> wow. Whoa. You got a dad sneeze. Holy Whoa. hell. That was right in the tits. Yeah, yeah, you, you sneezed right on him. Sarah had an idea for a sketch a long time ago, but a first date, and then it's, we're going, and then she sneezes into her shirt, and then we go to hook up, and her tits are just covered in snot and snuggers. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Do you jizz on the snot? Really get a gumbo? Uh, I don't know. We never got that far, but it was I, an idea. I like it. How about when a guy talks, and he's got just the slightest gurgle going, and you go, God, will you just clear that? Oh, yeah, you Come can on. feel the clear. That's why I got a hawk every once in a while, because the hawk. silent re has made a big comeback. I'm all itchy back here. I think that's maybe why I'm sneezing. Yeah. Maybe it's the smoke. Maybe it's the cat. Maybe it's my asshole. But Sure. Tony Hawk. Hawk it up. Something's got me sniffling and, and snuffling over here, but what can you do? But yeah, every once in a while, you listen to someone talk, and you're like, God, it would feel so satisfying. You just want to do it, because I know how good it feels to just go, ah, ah. Yes, that's it. And then sometimes they're on a pod. I'm like, you're speaking into a microphone with a uh, couple of Siemens dancing on your uh, globula back there. Get it down or they, get it up. They probably got Silent Re. Get it out. Get it out. Good movie. Which one was that? Oh, Get, get out. out. Oh, yeah. By the way, shit year for movies. Can I just say, oh. I watched Minari the other day. Have you seen Minari? Uh, Minari? That, that was my is, Uber driver. That is a uh, piece of shit. I've never heard of Minari. Aziz Minari. It is so <laughs> bad. It's like nominated for Best Picture. It's going to win. I know it's going to win because it's about a, a blue-collar Asian family, and it's kind of the year of uh, uh, well, Stop Asian Hate. Well, they had the uh, parasite moment. Don't you forget it. I know, but that was pre- the year of the thing. Yeah. That was just great, and that was exciting, and that movie was amazing and deserved to win, and great I was movie. thrilled that it won, and I love that guy. Korean. Um, but this one, P.U., it is a stink fest. Really? Oh, it's so bad, and it's just like, <laughs> yeah. stinks. Stinks on ice, stinks out loud, stinks on rice. It's horrible. Ooh, Asian. Well, what's weird is now, hold on, let me speak over the uh, some Asian guys getting bludgeoned to death with a uh, egg roll. Hold on. What's weird now is they, it seems like the winner of the movie is just the saddest. That one was the saddest one. You made me cry and jerked my tears and jerked my ass and jerked my, my nephew. But 
It's not actually a good movie. It's just a. It's just a bummer. It's nice and sad. I mean, I don't know. The best picture nominees this year. Woo! Sting. I mean, Trial of Chicago Seven. Speaking of Sasha Baron Cohen, I can't even watch that one. It just looks like a cheese dick cheese ball movie. It feels like um, a TV movie. It looks bad. Sound of Metal is amazing. That I don't know if you good. watched that. that was Love good. that. That's a hell of a picture. But thank God the lead was brown. Uh, yeah. That was that was a film. But uh, Minari stinks. Uh, one night in Miami is the worst thing I ever saw in my whole life. I never heard and, of that. And. Uh, uh, I can't remember the other one. Nomadland? Ones, but... Oh, Nomadland wasn't bad. Nah. I liked it. You get to see McDormand's bush, and that's fun. I've been wanting to see that since uh, Blood Simple. So I know, but there's a cutoff on that bush. I mean, it's an expiration. <laughs> I-, I wanted to see the bush in uh, 91, not in 01. Yeah, you 21. get uh, two-term bush, but... Um, <laughs> w. Who knows? Uh, but anyways, Minari sticks, and uh, isn't there another comedian named Minari? Minari, Sh- Minari Shafir. Oh, that's not bad. All right, I'll take it. He should be home soon. That's two references. I gotta, I gotta move on from him. He's been in my head. Well, he's been in my ass, and uh, that was the <laughs> last girth. time I'll ever go to Ecuador. Well, he likes to pack a bowl. Whew. <laughs> um, no one ever refers to an asshole as a bowl, but that's pretty good. Well, because you use you shit in a bowl, so maybe it's too confusing. <laughs> You know what I mean? You put your bowl on the bowl. There you go. It's a bowl exchange. Ah, uh-huh, we're going bowling. For Columbine. <laughs> um, for that movie, I was a little off-putting, too, I might add. Off-putting? Bowling for <laughs> Columbine? It's yeah. Off- I mean, I guess that's one way to describe it. I'd say it's a, it's a, it's a school shooting, right? Yeah, well, it's a documentary about guns and everything, but uh-huh. there's a couple of real stretches from that uh, stretchy waist of his. Yeah, stretch Mark. He's got a couple. That guy's a real tub. <laughs> Any, any jizz. Buy a button down, will you, more? I mean, every day I see him, he looks like he's uh, like coming out of a, a, a L.L. Bean. I don't know. He's just so, it's like sweater and blues pants with a fluffy hat that's that looks like it's been you know run over by a truck. The hat game is where it's bad. It's a flat bill on the back, never quite fits. It's up, it's goofy. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on with his hat situation. He looks like an old, out-of-work umpire. It's like all black, but it's all ill-fitting and, and uh, faded a little. The guy's a millionaire. I know. Well, he's making documentaries about strikes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sorry. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. We're having a ball. Four. Yeah. Uh, your mind's in the gutter. Um, oof. Anyways. What Let's focus. T- oh, oh, the Oscars. Yeah, well, the, the ratings are through the floor. They're going to go do Zoom again, which is... Uh, that's Zoom gonna, Oscars? That's Zooming it. Oh, no. It's all ruined for the Oscars. I think I think people gave up on that last year, the Golden Anals and the Globes and the Emmys. It's all shit. But last year, I think there was an Academy Award before COVID, right? Before uh, everything shut down? Wasn't Kimmel, there? remember Kimmel did some... Oh, maybe it was the Emmys. They're all blending together. Like, I feel uh, like wasn't the Parasite was last year? Yeah. No. Parasite was last year. I think it was I, two years ago. Pretty sure it was last year because uh, I saw right. it in Omaha right before the shutdown. Ah, uh, maybe you're Which, right. I'll be in no. I was just in Omaha. Never mind. Uh, I think it was. I think they must have done the Oscars. It was right before everything shut down. I think the one directed by Ho Kung Do Duck Bong Joon June. Jew Bong Joon, J O O N. All right, Bong Joon. Yeah, I think Bong that was June. last year, wasn't it? Feels like two. I mean, you got you got to take the pandemic year, and that's gone. That's out. That's already over and done with, and uh, didn't count. No, the pandemic year is this year's movies because it's like the Super Bowl. The Oscars from last year was for the movies from 2019. Then I definitely think it was two years ago. Let me look it up. Give it a I Google. feel like we need a in studio producer here. This is no good. Cat's worthless. I mean, uh, this guy's like an old Mexican uh, siesta, just sleeping on the job. Had a few too many cervezas. Yeah. Oh yeah. Parasite was a 2019 film. Oh shit! Won the Academy Award for Best Picture. It hit me, fatty. All right. Give it to me straight. I can take it. Wait a minute. Oh god. Uh. Keep talking, now winners, what nominees. Is that, the Chinese takeout menu? What are you looking at here? <laughs> this I is see a big. lot of characters. This is all the Oscars. This is a bad. Jesus, quite a idea. list. So that's the thing. All right, what do I see? All, all right, here we go. Ninety second Academy Awards. Here we yeah, go. February 9th, two thousand twenty. That was pre shutdown. Wow, that man. Was last year. They had them early last year. Usually it's late February, early March. Right. I feel like. 
Yes, the gay Super Bowl. So we're back, but this year they're not going to have one, I guess? Well, it's going to be a Zoom. Oh, Which Christ is kind of nice, though. I mean, look, only because... We got to watch the pre-roll. Ryan Seacrest is out there with the uh, the black lady with the Star Wars outfit and the hat. And they go, oh, what are you wearing? And she's got feathers for some reason. Then we got to go, oh, she looks fatter than normal. And he's gayer than usual. I hate it. Just give me the movies. Well, you don't have to watch that. You don't have to watch any of it. Well, they say, hey, it starts at 8. Then I put on at 8. And we're, oh, we got another hour of uh, jazzercising and red carpet. Does it match the drapes? Well, I think you might remember this story. We had a, a mutual friend, oh, acquaintance. Oh, lay it on and me. And we had an Oscar. He had an Oscar party. Or she, whatever. They had an Oscar party. And they were like, all right, come at whatever time. We're going to have Oscar teenies and whatever. Mm. And we were drinking and having some fun. Actually, you know what I just realized? Uh Uh-oh. You weren't there. You blew me off. Uh, You fucked me. I came later. You fucked me twice. I remember with this same guy. (laughs) Once was St. Patrick's Day, and this is where I got my first scoop of this piece of shit. (laughs) You were like, I'm in the bar, and this is before I knew you were a fucking lunatic, and I was walking around looking. No, it was uh, was called, um, I had a t-shirt forever, Emerald Isle or Fenway or Fupa. (laughs) <laughs> it was some Irish bar, St. Patrick's Day in New York. And, Irish Springs. And it was the first St. Patrick's Day I wasn't in Boston for. And people tried mm. to go, oh, we'll take you. We'll go wherever. Right. And it was a knockoff. At one point, I did get up on the bar and sang Danny Boy, which was pretty fun. Hey, he directed uh, Slumdog Millionaire. Well, whatever. You kept saying, I'm here. I'm here. I'll be there in 10. And of course, you never showed up. You weren't there. I was like walking in and out of the bar. It turned out you had just given me the old... Uh, Heave ho? Nah, that's not. That's when you throw someone out. This is the opposite. You're uh, oh. giving me the runaround. The runaround. You gave Sue. me the runaround. Yeah. And then you were supposed to come to Oscar Teeny or Grammy Tiny. Grammy, Grammy Teeny. Yeah. And I brought Canner along, and then you never showed up. You stiffed me on that one too. Well, you know, it's a, it a different time. You could, you could get drunk and meet a fat gal at a bar and bring her home in a wheelbarrow, but. Uh, also, cell phones were more primitive. I couldn't get a hold of things. Nah, you fucked me. But anyways, what happened was we were watching the the red rug there. Yes, and carpet. <laughs> red rug of <laughs> The Shining. <laughs> um, red rug. Uh, but anyways, we're watching it, and all of a sudden, the commercial came on. He started fast forwarding. We were like, what the fuck is this? We realized we were oh. watching a recording of the red carpet. You're like, what are we what? doing here? You have the red carpet recorded? We're watching a recording of the red carpet? Oh, and then you're holding a Grammy teeny that he made. His name is I mean, that's when you realize this guy's a, uh, a fagalist. I mean, I was going to keep it anonymous. Oh, here. sorry. Bleep his name. Yeah, bleep the name, he please. He moved it to a so I think we're good. I mean, you're He's making not- it less and less anonymous. Oh, I mean, the geez. podcast exists in... Ah, uh, good point. I didn't know we were international. All right, blank the town, blank the city. Jesus Christ. I gave a country and a first name. I think it's pretty tough to... Uh, he's out of the business. I don't think so. <sighs> but someone, he has friends in the business that go, hey, these two assholes are shitting on you. I mean, I like the guy. We're still, we're still pals. <laughs> we talked on the phone a little while ago. I mean, I love the guy. Yeah, I love him too. Yeah, we love him. We love you, buddy. We love you, Steve. Yeah, I, but I do remember TiVo... When I first saw TiVo, my mind was blown. I said, this is going to change everything. Tim Tebow? TiVo. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant Steve-O. No, no, no. He sucks. Um, you don't like him? Uh, I like the, the, the antics. I like the cutting up, but, uh, you know, get off the stage. My buddy saw him. My buddy, a friend of a friend. I have all these friends of a friend. I'm like Kramer over here. But this guy my buddy went to school with was at... Uh, first break. What's it called? Spring break. Spring break. Yes. And they're at a hotel, and Steve-O is there. And this was like pre-cell phone camera or whatever. No no TV show. I think I told you this already, but he was on top of a roof and dove off the roof into the pool just like for fun. I love it. He wasn't doing a show. Like that. He's just that fucking crazy. He's crazy. And that's, that's the guy you want to see. You know, you don't want to see him at the Omaha Funny Bone, but... Uh yeah, no, he's a he's a cool dude and fun and ballsy. I mean, the guy would snort wasabi for Christ's sake. Yeah, that's pretty ballsy. He picked, he put his balls down and let a scorpion uh, get the sack. I mean, the guy goes for it. Yeah, I don't like that shit. I, I think that's so strange. But that was my least favorite part of Jackass. I like when they did the sketchy type thing. Yeah, yeah, that was amazing. Well, yeah, well, it was tough because Knoxville was so likable, but he would put himself in harm's way for you. For your entertainment, it was there was something touching about that. Like he'd go, "I'm gonna 
paint myself red and have a bull come at me. And you're like, you don't have to do that. And he's like, that's ah, for the show. Right. Yeah, that part's fun. That's cool. I hated the shave the guy's head. Oh, uh, yeah. And then, like, the yeah, punch him in the balls. But I love that the golf course air horn is, like, one of the funniest things of all time. And What's that one? That was the one in the movie, the first movie. Uh-huh. They were hiding in the golf course by the tee box and just hitting an air horn every time guys go to drive. <laughs> and then you couldn't write something better. The guy gets pissed at them, and he turns. He's going to drive his ball right at them. And right as he goes to do that, they hit the air horn, uh-huh. and the ball goes rolling away. It's like perfectly executed. It was great comedy because it was basically if cartoons were live, like real. Right. You know, they would just hit you with a mallet and you get a big doinky here or they'd go in a loop de loop with a rocket car. It was all just Tom and Jerry. So fun. I'd yeah. Kill for a big doinky doink. But uh, same. Speaking of movies and films, I got to give everybody the second half of oh, this tale. Lay it on me, Dickless. This movie is in the can. We have wow. we have shot. Cans. The joke is the name of the movie. Ooh. Pretty let's good. Hope it's not a joke. Not to be confused with the Brandy Carlisle hit song of the same name. Aha. Uh-huh. The or, joke. Or the Joker. Well, that's, you know. That's one letter. I guess it's one letter away. Well, Joker is the movie. Uh, no the, the Joker is a guy, so it could be confused, but it has some roots in that. Oh. You could say. Good band. Roots? Yeah. Handbook? Ah, uh-huh. movie too. Miniseries. LeVar Burton. What's his name? LeVar Burton. Who's that? He's the black guy, uh, Toby. Uh, I he's never a, watched he's it. He's also on um, uh, The Next Generation, Star Trek. He was the blind weirdo at the... Wah, 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 wah. Oh, he was Roots? Yeah, yeah. No kidding. And I believe Reading Rainbow, but don't quote me on that. Wow. Take a look. It's in a book. That's all I got. Reading Rainbow. I can't read. Mm-mm, lots of fun. Yeah. Um, any tits. Oh, sorry. So last week, we, we, I regaled everybody or regarded everybody with the tales of the rehearsal. I had just come from rehearsal for the movie, uh-huh. if you remember. Yes. Is that right? Yeah, I did a nice big rehearsal with the other actor and myself, and I was on my, on my way to there. No, I just come from there. Okay. I came from there, went and did the rehearsal, went and shot this movie, and I got to tell you, I feel alive. Woo! I mean, I have not felt this alive in, in years. Wow. I mean, I, I went over there and I said, I'm going to really try to nail this and have some fun and learn and just be part of it. I'm going to be an actor. Maybe you are an actor deep in. I might be an actor. I don't know. I mean, a I don't have much being. range. I'm playing myself. Sure, but hey, it's fun to emote. It's fun to own it and be vulnerable and let it all out. Oh, I really went for it. I, I mean, I took my, my dick out. I got naked. I, I touched a couple of kids. It was really exciting. But Kevin Spacey. So we show up there, and the movie's shooting over on um, Sutton Place. You know Sutton Ooh, Place? Very high end, very affluent. It sounds like Britain, doesn't it? Sutton. Over here, Sutton Place. Yeah, it does. It's Hello. Kind of maybe it's right next to Hyde Park. I mean, it is pretty beautiful over there. This is, uh, if you're not familiar, East Side uh, in the fifties, fifty fourth and first, fiftieth East Sutton Place. Ooh, you're basically in the river. Right on the river. I mean, that, that scene in Manhattan where they're under the bridge is like a block up wow. over there. And you look out the window of the apartment, and there it is, East River. You can see Brooklyn. You can see the Williamsburg Bridge. I mean, it was really Ooh. something. Doorman, a couple doormen with the big hats oh, and the thing. It. And the, the brass elevator and uh, really exciting stuff. So, of course, uh, I'm give nervous. A, give you a taste of old New York, the way it once was. By the way, happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rusty. <laughs> um, so I go in there, and call time is uh, nine thirty. Call time means you know what time you have to go to work for you, uh, you folks at home that don't have jobs, don't Civilians. know what it's like. Yeah, yeah. I hate call time because you show up at nine thirty, you hustle to get there. That's a, that's an, a, a, the devil's asshole for you. You got to go up and out in Queens and up down in Chinatown. Well, the first day, <coughs> first day, I took the subway to. 59th and Lex. So it's see on paper, it's not far. It's like three blocks over and four blocks down. But they're big blocks. You hit red lights every time. There's mm-hmm. construction. There's rush hour. It took me 20 minutes to walk over there. Mm-hmm. But the other days, I took an Uber and took nine minutes. Just boom, boom. Ah. Right across the bridge. <laughs> so I get over there, 9.30 a.m. And I'm nervous because he's shooting on film, which uh. I think we discussed last time. It was film. It's a limited amount of film you run out of film that's it that's it game over done which is the way they used to shoot of course but these students you know they can't afford more than that no no the the loans alone 
And the thing with the film is when it when you're recording on film, you hear the. Wow, I love that. So it's right in your face, and you can hear it, and you know that it's burning the film every second that it's running. As soon as you hear it, it clicks on. It goes. And you just know it's money. They're just printing money, printing. and this is all he has. It's his whole student thing. The cat's looking at me freaky. Ah, you're funny, snoozer. But let me ask you this, there, fatty. Is film cost more now that it's it's less used, or does it cost less now because you know supply hmm. and, and anal there? Well, that's an interesting question. I don't know. Very interesting. I I would assume it's more because they gotta make it still. They still gotta make and it. Making less. It so, might be about the same, but it goes up with inflation. But I mean, it's so much more expensive than digital because digital, you could just shoot a million takes, which is what we're used to shooting. Anytime sure. we shoot anything, I mean, yes. we're not shooting shit on film. We do a little sketch. You do a thing out in the thing, and you got a digital. You go take it again. Kind of like when someone hands you a photo nowadays. You go yeah. Take a photo. People go, I took 48 of them just exactly, to make sure. Exactly. Which I never even appreciate because I'm like, now I got to decipher which one's the best. I got to delete 47 photos here. That's a that's a lady move, you know, because you, you only look good in one of them out of 39. So you got to take 40. Well, you got the blinks and the tits. It's a whole situation. But yep, tits. So the film, they get four canisters of film and it's 11 minutes per roll. So they have 44 minutes to get a seven minute movie. Ooh, that's pushing it. I mean, it's pushing it. It's pushing it real good. And, of course, there's some fuck-ups. They click it on, and the person goes, Oh, I forgot my line. Oh, oh fuck. Oh. And people start freaking out, and everyone's, like, throwing their hands up, and it's just burning. They're burning the film, Mark. Burning, Jerry. So that was pressure. So I'm standing there. I'm like, I'm afraid I'm going to ruin this guy's movie, the whole thing. And I sit there with the other actor, and the other actor, he's an actor. This guy's a real actor. He's got, uh-huh. uh, you know, headshots. He went to school. He's on Broadway. He's on Shakespeare. He's a Shakespeare actor. Oh, uh, summer stock? I don't know what that means. Ah, uh, something with Shakespeare. I don't know. I no idea about Shakespeare. I All I know either. is to be or not to be. Yeah, he. you know, he invented the word un. Hmm? You know, you go, uh, that's very unrelatable, or that's uh, undoable. He invented the U.N., not the no kidding, not United the Nations. Yeah. Unsubscribe. There you go. Don't do that. No kidding. Wow, I didn't know that. He's big. He also invented the word Jessica or the name. Really? Yeah, he's got some contribution. No kidding. I know he was married to Anne Hathaway, different Anne Hathaway. Really? Yeah, the original, the OG uh-huh. Anne Hathaway. Or not OG, O-A-H. Old Anne Hathaway. Original Anne Hathaway. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, but she's old, yeah. She's dead, I think. She killed herself, I assume. But that guy is really something. And, and evidently, people, there's those people that are real Shakespeare assholes that are like, every story comes from a Shakespeare. Right, you know what I mean? Right. Like, you watch Saving Private Ryan, that's Macbeth. And right. fucking Pulp Fiction is for old brother, we're out there. Whatever the fuck it is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyways, he was great, I guess. I never got it. I don't care for the language. He stinks. I like Shakespeare in Love. That was good. Gwyneth yep. Paltrow's tits are fun. Her ears are weird. No offense. I just watched 10 Things I Hate About You. It's so funny because I was like, this is a adaptation of Taming of the Shrew. Mm. It's the same thing with the cunty uh, skinny chick, and she's a twat, and her sister's trying to get laid, yada, yada, yada. I never watched it or read it. But ah, it's pretty good. All right. Heath Ledger, right? Yes. He's very good. He's passed away, unfortunately. He died? Mm. Ah, so handsome. Yep. He died. Batman killed him. But mm. any jizz, I get there, and the other actors, he's, he's, he's Shakespeare, he's, he's theater, he's commercial, he's TV, he knows what he's doing over there. And so I'm kind of confessing to him. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm an asshole. But then I catch myself going, what are you talking about? I, I perform every night. I do stand-up comedy. I, I've taken improv. I went to the New York Film Academy for acting. And yes. uh, I've been in a million sketches. And ah, I can act. I'm yes. playing myself. What yes. the fuck is this? Here, here. I, why is this guy? He's not better than me. I'm better than him. How about that? Fuck this guy. He stinks. So I got, so, got some confidence. And I just said, hey, listen, this guy hired me. He knows me. We wrote it. We're rehearsing. And then I got really in there. We started rehearsing, had a lot of fun. I was really making eye contact and listening and acting. It's not acting. It's reacting. Whatever bullshit I heard in a magazine once. But it was so exciting. And you rehearse and you rehearse and you rehearse. And you say, what if I said it like this? I'm not so comfortable with that line. I think this guy might say this. What if I close one eye? What if I hop on one leg? What if I fuck the DP? You know, I just, you just start throwing shit out there. Throw it out. And it's exciting. 
And so we go into the room, we rehearse, and we do a, a camera rehearsal and all this stuff. And you're like, I'm doing it. We're making a movie. Wow. It's so exciting. I've been obsessed with movies since I was six. I never had the balls to pursue it. So I'm in this fun film. It's NYU. Scorsese went there. It's all I ever wanted to be and do. And you meet some young whippersnappers. There's a Tuesday on the set over there. He's a uh, he's he's working the boom pole. He's a gaffer or a key grip or a homo. I don't know what he is. Love a gaffer. But this kid, by the way... He's going to be big. This kid's going to make it. His name is Vinny. Vince. Who's he, the gaff or the director? He's the gay gaff. Oh, the gay gaff. And this kid, I mean, he's handsome as fuck. He's like a bro, but he knows everything. He's like, we got to get a 42. We got to get an I-69. Oh. Let's bring in the, the film thing. And, I and love he, that. And he's running around. He's like, anything you need. He's jumping on it. He's, he's, he's like a PA and a producer and a gaff and a grip. He's all the things. Gaffer is your best medicine. He's jumping everywhere. He's got everything, and they're fixing the lights, and I'm standing in. And But this guy, he's funny. He told me a sketch idea. It was a killer sketch idea. He loves us, loves the show, loves right. the slop. His mother was a mutter. <laughs> mother was a mutter? Father was a mutter. Jesus. Um, Go Gaff. So anyways, Big Vin, I, this guy's going to be huge. He's going to be Adam Sandler or some shit. Wow. And uh, it was very exciting because it's a unit of six. So there's six mm. students there, three men, three women. And uh, they had all done their student projects of this seven-minute film. And my guy, Mariano, Mariano Dongo Ooh. from Peru, Ooh. Uh, he's a sexy motherfucker. Yeah, you're telling me. And so he's the director. It's, this is the last project. So all six have done... The other five all done their film. This is the last film of the last thing. Mm. Second year at film school. And so I was trying to get the dirt because I'm like, you guys, what? You, you must hate one of these people. Uh. There must be one <laughs> asshole whose movie sucked. I mean, yeah. give it to me. But they wouldn't give it to me. They're like a nice unit. They're sweet. The younger generation is very sweet, They're I very think. very sweet. They're very nice. SEAL Team 6. Because you know me. I would have been like, this guy's movie sucks. He made some soap opera shit. She stinks. His... Dick is small, whatever. But are you in front of all of them when you're saying this, or do you get do you get a couple off to the side? I was pulling them aside, oh, asking boy. for their numbers, and uh, you know, whatever, whispering sweet nothings sure. and saying I like you the best or whatever. But yeah, I, I couldn't get any scoops. But it's so interesting. I'm like, I wish I'd done a like a meta documentary about the six of them making yes, their films. Yes. And it's just so interesting to me. But so Mariano's my guy, and he really was a great director he believed in me he was really helping me and say you could do this you could do that he really was uh open very collaborative i like collab and i'm telling you this is going to be a hell of a picture I, maybe really? we'll put it on the patreon or youtube it's Please. a lot happening in this this picture i mean you got to put it on youtube when they develop that film in four years they got to develop the film he's got to edit he's got to you know tape it i think they upload it digitally though so you can edit digitally ah. but whatever still exciting but very exciting. Uh, it was quite a thrill. And then the other actor, he had to get emotional. And uh, that got weird Ugh. because these actors, you know, they're actors. This is what they do. And he wants to get a reel and he wants to get the next role and everything. So right, right. he was really trying. And what are we talking like? <laughs> Joey. You that was my name. AIDS. Well, but what are we doing here? Like, are we crying on a shoulder? Are we blowing you? Is it tell me by your name? Uh, eating ass? Well, I don't know how much I can say about the film. It's not my film, but basically, I go to therapy, and I'm just gonna do it, I guess. But I'm, I'm a comic. I go to therapy, and I'm working with Alan. Is the name of the therapist? Oh man, this guy's all in. So it's Alan, and Alan's giving me some advice. But then there's a plot twist. Oh, boy. In Alan's seven minutes, we got a twist? Huge twist. All kinds Ooh of twists. And there's turns. Oh, man. It's like shoots and ladders. There's twists as well as turns. But uh, so Alan's wife comes in, played by one Sarah Tolomash. Ah. Which is interesting. There's about a 38-year difference, by the way. The guy, Alan, is played by, you know, Anthony Hopkins' his older brother. Right. So, yeah, right. so he's uh, younger than Sarah. So Sarah comes in, and, uh, you know, they have a little little beef, and I'm in the middle of the beef, and at one point I'm on stage at a comedy club. It's pretty wild, and, and sometimes it's even spooky, I think. It's going to mm, come out a little bit. Geez. It's, it's going to be really something. I'm excited to see this thing. He packed a lot into that tight little kid butt. Absolutely, a little bowl. So uh, I'm excited, but he has asked this other actor, he's like, do you think you could cry for me? And the actor's like, I think I can do it. Oh, my Lord. So the second day, towards the end of the day, it's the big cry scene, and the actor, he just disappears. He's out down the hallway. He's out riding fences or something. Well, he's got to conjure up the molestation or whatever it was, the dog dying, the mom eating him out. Exactly. I mean, this guy's legit. This guy's an actor. Ooh. So... I feel like an asshole because the whole time we've been goofing around. And at the end of every take, I'm like, 
and anal's funny or whatever, you yeah, know, because yeah. I'm acting. I feel like an asshole. So I I'm it. like, you got to break the tension. I kept breaking tension, improvising some weird shit or whatever, or saying I wanted to blow my dad or whatever. And I think a couple of the ladies didn't care for it. But eh, what can you do? You They'll treat people like equals. I know. But so he goes off to the end of the hallway. So we're all kind of sitting around, checking our watches, going. And then, you know, Mariano's going to go down because the director's going to deal with all the talent. Yeah, yeah. Well, until he gets an AD. Well, he goes down the end of the hallway and he I comes back and he's like, hey, the other guy, he's, he's in it right now. So we got to kind of wait a couple minutes. So just be careful when he comes out because, you know, he's not Steve anymore. Now he's Glenn or whatever. Right. You're like, oh, he's, Jesus Christ. He's meta. So it's making me nervous because then he and then he comes out like it's like a prize fight. Like the curtains open, he comes out, he's got his head down, he's all red eyed, wow. and and I'm like Jesus. And then Sarah, you know, she's just you know Sarah, she just wants to come in, have a little fun, whatever. She's in the scene with him. Oh my God, she must have been thrown off. And, and Sarah's never made eye contact in her whole life. I mean, sure. we fuck, and I say thank you. She's looking over <laughs> at uh, you know the poster of Mel Gibson. Sure, yes, he's good. So. Uh, She's got to like <laughs> stare at this guy it's and she's just looking at me like, what'd you get me into, you asshole? And this guy's got tears just flowing and the camera starts and he's Woo! just, he's in it. And then my cue is supposed to bring him out. I'm supposed to say, Alan, what the fuck? Let's get out of here. This guy sounds like a bit much. <laughs> and he's not breaking because he's in it. I hope he has a Heath Ledger. So I'm going, Alan. Hey, Alan. Alan. I can see the director's like, what the uh, fuck? And the film. Ah, uh, the film. But the guy, he's getting a good cry going. So oh, I don't know what to do. Geez. I'm like, what do I do? And then do you want this? Are you getting this take? I don't know what's what. Sarah's looking at me. She's showing me her tits. This guy's asshole's squinching. Yeah, it's a seven-minute movie there, Nicholas. <laughs> we don't have time for you to weep it up. But finally, they go cut. They can it. He throws the line. It's beautiful. And I, I'm so excited. It was quite a performance by this guy. I learned a lot. I'm like, I got I to figure out how to... Get my inner whatever, sure, and get some cries Jesus. going. But I feel like I did okay. I don't know. I can't wait to see it. I hope he doesn't hate it. I hope he doesn't cut me out of the thing. Yeah, yeah. Might give it to this guy. The movie's called Alan now. I said that. I was like, this feels like it. It turns into his movie for a while, but it kind of comes back to me. I, I don't know what it's going to look like, but the cat's having a fucking freak out. Now he's having a dream about a mailman or something. That was crazy. It had a little seizure. Yeah, it does that. A little seizure pizza. Caesar, Caesar. Um, well, anyways. Wait a minute. Do you think in a deep, twisted, fucked up, kooky kind of way, he wanted to be the main queef? You think he was trying to uh, steal the uh, steal the pie? Well, the director asked him to be emotional, so that's what it took for him to get emotional. But All right. it was it was tricky. That was my first experience with, like, I can't imagine what it's like to work with, you know, Sean Penn or whatever. Ooh, because Daniel Day. Oh, my God. Forget it. I always think about that scene in There Will Be Blood where... Uh, Daniel Dalos is pulling Paul Dano through the mud and like shoving mud in his mouth oh, and his face. Yeah. I'm like, God, that must have sucked so bad. I know. And then just two feet away is just a guy going, you know, with like a guy holding a boom. And then we're just right there. I mean, they're cramming mud in his mouth and like fucking eating it. Yeah, you fucking loser. So, but it was quite a sight to see and it was straight, but it's so hard because the comedian in me just wants to be like, what are you doing, dude? I'm like, what is this? But I know, but he's good at it. You know, that's what it takes. He was a pro. It was exciting to work with them and, and, and fun to just be to be playing. It was fun to play. It was kind of like doing this, you know. It is weird because I've done minimal act. I've been in a few plays, some rinky-dink uh, patchwork player bullshit. And after it's over, you have this jolt of like, woo wee like an outlet. You, you feel like you got something off your dick and you, you're... you're you're doing skipping around the neighborhood. It's, it feels, you feel reborn. Oh, so I mean, all the stuff is still in my dick, but I felt great and I was skipping out of there and and Sarah kept being like, ah, what time's it going to go? I have a spa. Get, and the other guy's like, what time? But I was like, I'll stay here all day. I love it. I, I'm chatting it up with these guys and you know, I'm a big film nerd queef, so I'm loving it. I'm like, what are you using? The 240, the 616, the 2018, oh, wow. check the can, suck your dick. And so I was just having a great time. I wish it was a feature. It was every day yeah. for the next six months. I had such a great time. And I told these NYU kids, if you need a limited goof uh, with no no range, hit me up and, <laughs> and have me in there. But I think these kids are going to be the next wave. This wow. Mariano, he's like a visionary. And then this kid, Vince, is, he just knows it all. He's very funny, very handsome. He's, I think he's going to be big, these guys. All right, Big Vin. Now, wait, let me ask you, what are these kids? These kids, these youngsters, what do they think about the the state of film? 
Because it ain't know. what it used to be. Well, we didn't get to talk too much about it, but I assume they're really into the, the good stuff because okay. they're NYU kids. They're studying all this shit. By the way, the uh, the DP for this project... Double penetration. Her name is the name of a famous filmmaker, one of my favorite filmmakers. The last name, I see the tape on the on the slate. Uh-huh. And I go, hey, blankety blank. Any relation to blankety blankety blank? And he's like, yeah, it's my dad. I'm like, what? what? And I wanted to just nerd out, but you don't want to do that to the kid because then you're like, I know, whatever, right. blankety blue, uh, whatever. But I was like, what? You got to be shitting me. Wow. I can't believe you're working with Polanski's kid. It was so exciting. So the whole thing was a big, exciting experience. And I, now I just want to do more. I want to be yes. up the ass of, uh, you know, you're, you're so scared to try to do a thing and no. then you do it. I should have been pursuing it my whole life. I wasted my life. Proudy. Hey, you've been in a, you were in a Bacardi commercial. That's nothing to sneeze uh, at. Yeah, Captain Morgan. And I did Henry Phillips movie. But I, uh-huh. I should have been trying to do it. But I was like, what am I going to do? I'll just tell dick jokes at a fucking comedy club instead my whole life. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. But I will say there's nothing more fun than being on set. It's the best. It's the be- Especially when you have a, a big role. If you're one of the extra queefs in the back, you know, who's dressed like a, like a pilgrim, you know, you got to churn butter the whole time. That stinks. But when you're really in it and you have a chair with your name on it, that's the move. That's embarrassing to be an extra. They should all shoot themselves in the tits. But in there. Tuesdays with Stories is also brought to you by Blue Chew. Woo! That's right. Get more confidence in the bedroom. Blue Chew's tablets offer the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in a chewable form. If you don't like swallowing pills, this is for you. It works fast. Take it day or night, and you'll save a ton of money compared to the name brands. Blue Chew is an online prescription service. That means no doctor's office or waiting in line. Talk to a licensed medical provider and get prescribed Online, ships right to your door in discreet package, and Blue Chew makes everything in the USA. You got that right, Fatty. I love Blue Chew, always have. I keep one right in my little hip pocket there in case I bump into a hot guy. Get on it quick, ASAP. Special offer just for the gays, bluechew.com. Visit them and get your first shipment free when you use your special promo code TUESDAYS. Just pay five bucks in shipping. Again, that's B L U E Chew.com. Promo code Tuesdays. And try it free, folks. Love the Chew. Got to love the Chew, Chewbacca. And uh, Tuesdays with Stories, whatever the name of the show is, mm-hmm. is also brought to you by Blue Blocks. Oh, yeah. This is a great new sponsor. I'm pumped about Blue Blocks. Last time we told you about how Blue Blocks amazing sleep mask. Now we're here to tell you about their. Light filtering glasses. Look at these. Mark's got a pair on right now. They're pretty cool. It's quite a thing here, folks. Sleep Plus. Get yourself some real red lenses for true blue and green light blocking. They sent a pair. They sent you a pair of those glasses. I got the um, block out the computer light glasses. Ooh, smart. And they're fancy. I gave them to Sarah because she looks at her phone late at night, all night. And by the way, she looks sexy in them. I've never made love to a glasses wearer. Now I get to, thanks to Blue Blocks. I love when they get a skew. Very exciting. Uh, I'm really loving those. Mark got the Clark Summer Glow. Yes. I got the Wayfarer computer glass, and I, I'm just loving them. I, I, I'm, I'm using them. I, Sarah and I kind of both share them. I check them out. They save your eyes some trouble. I give them to her. She looks hot in them. She wears them. Yes, unisex. And you look super cool. You look Ooh. hip and all yellow-eyed. Thank you. Yeah, they they feel great. They fit great, and they smell great. They just fit right on your head well, and the, the light, the blue and the blocking, it's very good. Support Blue Blocks because they support Tuesdays with Stories. Get 20% off with code TUESDAYS at blueblocks.com slash Tuesdays. That's B L U. B L O X dot com slash Tuesdays for twenty percent off. Blueblocks dot com slash Tuesdays and use code Tuesdays for twenty percent off, folks, and get them today. Do your eyes a favor, will you? Get them while they're hot. <clears throat> Speaking of blocking sun, I just got back from uh, the great city of Miami, Florida. Miami. Oh, great, yeah. Great town. Moons over Miami. It was uh, super fun. And as you know, much like Tejas, you go down to Florida and you just you just get off that plane. You want to bang a guy's wife, get an ass implant, and buy a gun. 
Certainly, yeah. I mean, Miami, you, you want to be Cuban. I want to go to Little Cuba, Little Havana. Yes. And go to, what's that place I always go? The diner there with the things. With the sandwiches. Yeah, what's that called? Madeira's or... Marina? No. I just went there Amari, a couple months ago. Best picture. I can't think of it. Either way, one thing, with you know, Miami was great. We get in our hotel. We're right, uh, right by the fun stuff. And we're actually, we're staying in Doral. Doral. That's where the club is. It's one of those jobs, you know. Ooh. You you gotta you gotta go out to the the burbs. I don't like the sound of that. Yeah, but it's a cute little uh, Hispanic suburb. It's nice. Los uh, otros. Yeah, we went to a cockfight, had some afungo and uh, some salsa music. But uh, the club is beautiful, and I just gotta say this: this is it's pretty newish club. I don't know, maybe it's eight years old. This is the most accommodating staff I've ever seen in my life. Really? Unbelievable. First of all, they kept thanking me for being on time. They're like, thank you for showing up a little early. Thank you for not going long. Thank you for being ready and having your shit together. And I'm like, what the hell is going on at this club? Well, and I think it's a, yeah, <laughs> it's a local scene and they get a little, little uh, freewheeling. Yep. They get uh, spicy. There you go. Ay, 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 ay. So here's here's how here's just an example. I forgot my merch. I'm I'm so bad with with everything. This is why I need an assistant. I put I sent it to the wrong place. I fucked it all up. I got the shipment wrong. It That's never showed up because of me. So she goes, I know a guy in Miami. He could probably make these tonight, and we'll have them for tomorrow. I'm what? Like, what the hell are you talking about? Usually you forget your merch. They go, ha, ha, fuck you. Now we don't have to wait for you to sell this shit. You kook, get out of here. We hate you. You're a hack. Yeah, what do they care? They don't care, but this lady, Melissa, was so nice, and uh, they got the shirts made, Southgate Printing, I want to say, some guy named Eric. He showed up. We got a photo. He's a Tuesday. Whoa, Eric. Hey. Yeah. I put the, the I put, he sent me a photo. He's like, here, here's a, I'm printing your shirts right now. And it was pretty cool. It just was like, nyeh, nyeh, and it just pumps out of a little hole and says comedy on a black shirt. It was great. Wow. So we sold those shirts. So I made more money because of them. And uh, just the best staff, the wait staff would come in the green room and bring you all kinds of good stuff, recommend stuff, ice cream. They gave me a bottle of tequila, a bottle of whiskey, a bucket of beers. I mean, it was really something. What what's, a town. What's the name of the club again? Miami Improv. Oh, Improv. Yeah. So all those years of you showing up on time, not going long, not burning the light, not banging the, the owner, that, that pays off apparently. They keep track of that. I think that's big. I think that's all I've ever had my whole life. I'm not funny. My dick's small. I got herpes. My father's gay, but I'm always on time. Yes, early. exactly. You're an on-time, herpes, small-dicked, uh, small-mouthed, four-headed man. But Ouch. they keep uh, they keep a tab on that. So just remember, you know, they they tell people, they talk, they all chit chat. So I got to give a shout out. Just Miami Improv, great club. Just everything you need, they'll just handle it for you. And they, they're one of those clubs that acts like it's their fault when it's clearly yours, uh, which goes a long way. I appreciate that. I don't want any fault. I don't want anything to be because of me. So please, everybody, take the fault. Yeah, I was like, oh, I fucked up the shipping label. She's like, no, it was probably us. Uh, some guy <laughs> stole it. These Cub Scouts around here. Who knows? I love that quality. Yeah, but here's the only clinker about Miami. We, we, uh, we said, you know what? Let's go down and do South Beach. It's Saturday. Let's get up early. Let's get out of Doral and yeah. get all the way down to South Beach and uh, just live it up. Sure. So me and her, we wake up. We're hungover, me and the lady. And uh, we, I get an Uber. It's like $68 because it's a mean drive. You jump in the Uber. We're all excited. Woo, you know, it's kind of like in a swingers where they're like, Vegas. Right, right. And then you know, 48 minutes goes by, and you're sitting in traffic, and the sun is blaring into that Camry windshield. And you finally get there. It is bananas. Like It was one of those things where the traffic was so bad, and the music was pumping everywhere, that I was like, let's just get out. Let's oh, just walk yeah. it. I'm not, that's the kind of guy I am. Yeah. Let me off on the freeway. I hate traffic. Hate it. Even if I'm walking in heels, I'd rather be walking in heels than sitting in the back of a car in traffic. Same here. Hate the pumps. So we get out and we go in this uh, bodega. So let's get a couple of cocktails or White Claws or Bud Lights. And she's like, I need sunscreen. So I was like, all right, we'll get that. We'll do the whole thing. We realized we didn't bring a towel, didn't bring a bench, didn't bring a balloon, a pail, a shovel, nothing. So... We go in this bodega kind of thing, and we're the only white people in there, and the uh, poor clerk guy is this cute little Asian man, looked like Short Round from uh, Indiana Jones. Ah. And he goes, my mask was down here because it's Florida, and he goes, 
please, could you put your mask on? And I go, oh, yeah, sorry, my bad, my bad. And everyone else has not, not wearing a mask. And right. I was like, he was terrified. He was trembling. And uh, he's like, uh, what are you having? We were so nice. He was like, oh, God, thank you. Thank you. Help me. Help me. <laughs> he was like smoking blunts in there. It was hilarious. Uh, two guys stole the register. It was a whole thing. <laughs> But uh, man, we had a, we just sat on the beach and we just it helps to have a little ah, ah yeah, boy I've never seen the cat chum up to someone like this it just stretched into me it's it wants to cuddle look at that wow oh my God. I this know, is but unbelievable it, it stretched its claw into my asshole well, it's a white claw by the way it's a white claw indeed yes but uh, yeah so just a great time on the beach and it, we didn't know we were on the gay beach gay beach that's most of Miami Beach is pretty gay. No kidding. I thought it was all big, bunking Latino boys fucking our wives. No, no. This was boys fucking our boys. And, uh, man, they were twerking and popping and locking and squeaking and squirting. And, man, it was a, it was a show. So you get up, you get your bench, you know. You go, oh, we'll take one bench. They go, that'll be $800 for an hour. And you go, okay. What's this bench? Bench? What, well, you don't want to talk about benches. We didn't bring a towel, so they give you a lawn chair, you know. Oh, like lawn a lawn chair. Yeah. A, I, I didn't know the term. A bench is like a wooden Woody Allen sitting on under the bridge. <laughs> a bench, you know, your fucking Johnny bench. No, no. The, the only thing hard and wooden was my dick staring at these uh, homosexuals out there with the thongs. My God, the thongs. Sometimes you see in the in the between area. Oh, yeah, the yeah. The dung pushes it out, so you get a little uh, negative space. Where the rubber meets the road, <laughs> You as got they that say. right. Well, they weren't wearing rubbers, and uh, it was a wild time, and I uh, just had a blast, got a little drunk on the beach, and that sun, it takes it out of you. Two shows that night. Oh, I can't go to the beach on show day. Really? Well, I do it all the time when I go to Florida, but uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Now, let me throw this one at you here. Now, this is the, the weird stuff where life fucks you right in the pooper. On the way to Miami, we're JFK, which is a nightmare, but it's a crazy security line. I take out the wallet, take out the joke book, take out the keys, the headphones, you know, the pen, everything, and I put it in the bin, goes through, it's all whacked out. It comes out the other end, and, like, the, the keys are on the belt, the joke book's all split to hell, and, uh, you know, I have all these loose papers on my in my joke book that you just throw on top, like so. You know, like sure, that. yeah, yeah. And I put that in the bin. When it comes out the other end, they're all strewn about. Some what? are on the belt, some are all over the place. And the one, you know, this is all nonsense, mostly swastikas and grocery lists. But the one I needed was gone. What? Isn't that weird? This is 68 pieces of paper. The one I need that has all my new jokes and, like, the shit I'm working on, gone. Oh, my God. It's like, uh, what's her name? Uh, Pepe Rosa. What was her name? Uh, That's one tuck. AOC. One no tuck. What's the lady? What's her oh, name? Oh, yeah, Maria. He's like, I guarantee you, Rosie's not... Uh, Tuck in your bed. Right. And then he right. lost the paper. What was his yes, name? Yes, it was like that. Uh, Donnelly Fiore Collins. Yeah, Senorita. Uh, Chiquita you, Banana. I don't know. Pepe. I think it's an R. Rosie. Rosa. I think it's a Rosa. Ah, I'll think of it later. No, I know what it is. I'll think of it in a second. Fuck. Let it happen. Let it happen. Loosen your asshole. I guarantee you. Lupe. Lupe! It's Lupe! That's it. Wow, it came in. I had in. to just settle down and loosen the asshole. It was good yes. advice. Yes. But what do you think? I mean, do you think the TSA guy might be an open micer who wanted to grab a Norman bit? I just think it's the weird way that Murphy's cum guzzling law. You know, the one, the half of this is a, like, this is a fucking roadmap. This is just, a, you know, a, my ballot for who I voted for. This is all nonsense. But the one paper I needed is gone. And it, it's weird how life can fuck you just in the right way. Well, when life gives you lemons, they take your bits, you know what yes, I mean? Yes, and your virginity and hymen is bleeding. So that was just one of those twists. Right when you get there, you're on no sleep. You get to the airport, and you're like, oh, the one joke I need. I'm that guy. I'm, I'm going through the, the car wash flaps of the belt. And they're like, sir, sir, get out of there, you know? <laughs> it was a nightmare. But uh, I couldn't find it. I never found it. I looked on the floor, the roof, the hell, the hell, uh, hell or high water. It, it wasn't there. Well, your sets are recorded at least, right? Right? So you yeah. can go back in and listen to them. I know, but who wants to listen to me do stand-up? I was doing this like, ah, oh, God, I can't find the one I need and whatever. Oh. It, it, I made it work, but it's just fucked up how the, the worst thing that could have happened happened. But I get it. It could have been worse. Could have lost all the notes or I could have uh, gone yeah, Yeah, I mean, the TSA guy could have taken you to the back and raped you until he came in your mouth. So this is that true. That would have been a bummer. This is true. Yeah. 
It By says, the way, I think your cat has something wrong with it. I mean, it's got crazy jitters. It keeps doing like a... I think you, maybe that's why you guys are similar. It's a little uh, jumpy. I know, but it, it, it seems fun, like, a, like an arrhythmia or something. I'm telling yeah. you, I might be saving your life. I would take this thing to the vet. It we've, keeps... we've taken it. Uh, I had a couple friends over. I was like, is this weird? Because it was doing this again. They were like, ah, animals, man. They twitch. Oh, that sounds like a bad friend. That's the friend that when you park in front of the sign, they go, "Ah, oh, don't worry. And then you got a big ticket. You're going to have a big ticket on its toe when it uh, has a seizure. Big ticker. It won't stop. The heart's jumping. I mean, this is, wow. I don't know anything about a cat other than it has six toes, but this thing is shaking like uh, my asshole on a Friday night in the winter. He's <laughs> shaking like a gay on the beach. But now, now here's when I got to run by you. So that was Friday. Saturday, we go, hey, let's check out Miami proper. Let's do the city. Let's see some stank on these buildings and go down to the to the nitty gritty. Sure. So we go to this place called Wynwood. That's like Ooh. their brick Brooklyn-y uh, hipster area. Stevie Wynwood. Yes, the high life again. So we go get some uh, overpriced Asian food. We get a couple overpriced coffees and a donut, and we're walking around. There's a there's a mural garden. What do you call that? Uh, mural. It's like hey, oh, you, I know what it you is. Paid ten bucks. No mural. A sculpture garden. Yeah, but it was murals, so I guess, I, guess I had it. Yeah, I think you got it. So there's this hipster chick with blue hair shaved on the side, and uh, I go, hey, how much is it for the for the mural tour? And she goes, it'll be $10, 8 if you're a senior. And so I go, hey, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be what, folksy. folksy. So I, t- I go, oh, senior, hey, that's all you, pointing to the lady. You know, she's younger than me. That's the joke. Mm. And and the girl goes, wow, rude. Oh, I mean, Jesus. there was some some venom on that. Oh boy! Yeah, she goes, "Ha ha! Wow, rude!" And I go, "What do you mean?" And I was in a mood. The sun's beating. I'm sweating. I'm she, gay. She's rude. You're in a mood. Yes, I need some food. Attitude. <laughs> uh, I got Jude. But either way, Jude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is getting a little lewd. But she goes, "Uh, wow, rude!" And I go, "What do you mean?" She goes, "That's pretty rude." calling her a senior, and I go, well, there's actually nothing wrong with being a senior, so you're rude. Oh, and then wow. She, and then she goes, well, well, whatever. And I'm like, whoa, 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 how come uh, when I zing you, it's a whatever? Well, you can you can zing me, and that's the problem with these people. They they don't take a, a account for what they're doing. There's a whole other thing going on with this lady. She's got some problems. She's working at a, a mural garden, for God's sake. I've never even heard of that until 10 minutes ago. Yeah. Fuck her. She stinks. Hopefully she gets some help and takes a Prozac or whatever. You win, she loses. That's what oh, I said. Oh, hey, wow, I'll take it. I just, I, I wasn't having it. You know, like, she was like, hey, uh, you know, cisgender, whitey, male, you can't talk to people like that. And I'm like, well, you, your thing was actually more offensive, so how come you don't take take credit for that? Yeah, uh, put that way. in your pipe and blow me. Exactly. No blow. So we didn't go in the mural garden, but we did go down to the, the Wynwood Marketplace, and this caught my anal. Now, now this, you're not going to buy it, and you're not going to go with it, and it's going to be a horrible idea, but I'm throwing it at you anyway. Oh, boy. Do I have to do something in this scenario? No, no, okay. no, no. But I just know I'm it's open. not going to end uh, like I would hope. Okay, oh, boy. So there's this one guy sitting on a stool, and there's a, uh, what do you call pull-up bar. Okay. And he goes, uh, there's a big sign that says, if you hold on for a... Two minutes, you get $100. Oh, wow. Sounds like a carnival. It's a carnival, but it's a grift. Uh-oh. So I go, wow, I do pull-ups every day on scaffolding. My, my whole day is hanging on bars. I've passed the bar. Okay. So I go, I think I might do this. And this guy behind me, some old guy with overalls and a sailor cap, goes, don't do it, don't do it. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, I tried it. It's way harder than it looks. The bar rolls. Oh. And I was like, oh. well, I do a lot of pull-ups, man. I do like 50 a day, 40 a day. He's like, I, I, I'm not saying it's impossible. People have done it, but don't do it. And it's all ego, Jerry. They get you in. Of course, yeah. So I don't understand. Do you have to pay money in? Yep, yep. yep. Ah, you didn't mention that. Sorry. You so pay how much money do you pay in? 10 clams. All right, 10 bucks. So what? Worst case scenario, you lose 10 bucks and you, you, you leave ashamed. Yes, exactly. So I got the lady watching. Uh, I've already been shamed, uh, attempted shame by the garden mural whore. And so I go, fuck it. I can do it. Okay, I'm listening. So all far, right. I'm on board. The guy had no faith in me. He's like, all right. He's got a little knapsack, puts the tent in, zips it up, and he goes, all right. Here, how about this, Dickless? I'll let you have a stool 
to to hold, like to stand up and hold it, and I'll pull the stool out. Oh, okay, like a suicide. Yeah, exactly. Which was a little nicer, you know, because if you have to jump up, that takes a little, that has sure. a little yank down. To Plus, it. the pull is a lot of energy. Exactly. So you want to conserve, like a Republican. And I said, uh, "All right, give me the stool. I want every inch I can get here." That's what she said. And so uh, he puts the stool down, and I grab it. And I'm feeling pretty good. I go, hey, this is all right. And I go, wow, I'm probably almost done. Two minutes. And I go, how much time do I have? And the lady goes, you're 20 seconds. And I go, oh. Uh, you can't even ask the time. You got to just stay in there. It's like planking. You got to just yes. really just go, don't even tell me. Let me know when I got eight seconds left. Exactly. So now a crowd is gathered. I got old mama Clarita. I got a couple of black kids. I got the, the baby in the stroller with the family. And they're all like, come on, buddy. Come on. And I'm like, ah. Ah! And then I try to adjust, and it turned on me. Oh! And then you learn all you, you you lose all your all your strength. It all goes because your arms are going through hell. And I go, "What am I at?" One guy goes, "58 seconds." And I go, "Well, I gotta get a minute. Get a minute." And I put everything I had into it, and I jumped up like I, I you know, what do you call that? I oomphed. Jump, I, uh, I, I boosted. Jump, a boost. Yes, I Space boosted. Boost. And I got one more thing, and then the thing turned again, and I oh. fell right on my ass, and I got to a minute even. It was so embarrassing. There is a season turn, turn. Well, I, I think it's great. You tried. You did your best. You should get 50 bucks, by the way. Ah, that's interesting. It's all, or, it's all or no. It should be a buck a, a minute or a buck a second or, or something. Yeah, that's not bad. Get, get your money back. Because he's like, honestly, the average is about 40 seconds. So I was like, all right, I'd be Beat the average, but uh, boy, I really thought I had it. Yeah, too. It's, well, it's one of those those tricks, I guess, that makes it seem like no problem. It's like eating six Pringles in an hour or whatever the fuck the thing is. Exactly. The uh, the 100 eggs or whatever. Yeah, 35 or 39. But yeah. you, you did Abortion. your best. I mean, 10 bucks. What the fuck? I, nah. $10 is what's what's $10 really? No, it comes and goes and it, you can't take it with you. And I'm, I'm selling the merch anyway. But boy, I really thought, hey, how hard is it to hang? I can, I can hang. I'm a good hang. You can't we're, hang. We're hanging right now. Yes, hang me. I'm oh. well hung. Speaking of ten dollars, can I just? We got to. We're over time here. Oh, but I gotta geez. throw one thing out here, please. Because this is like, if you had held that for two minutes and got the hundred bucks in front of your lady, the whole crowd, like George pulling the title this time. Yes, out, yes, holding it, one. It probably would have given you a similar feeling that I got from this event, which was much less effort. Uh-huh. So it's Sarah's birthday. She turned 58 again, and I went. we went to Bartolino's, where Vitor used to have his oh, show. Great, great restaurant. Great Vitor. So we go out there, Darth Vitor. We go to this, this, the restaurant or whatever. We're bullshitting. It was a long shoot day. We shot ourselves, uh, the, the movie. We shot the movie. Uh-huh. I was exhausted. I was getting up year. at 730, the whole thing. Well, this yeah. wasn't a mass. This was a, uh, a lump. <laughs> so... We go Grab over me. there, and we're eating Bartolino's, and, you know, we go out to eat all the time, and I always pay because I'm a man or whatever. Sure. So he hands me the check. I, I give out the tip, and I just do this math. I'm like, this is a huge tip, 100, 100 bucks. What are we, we're at 100 bucks? The two of us, we had an Italian meal. What the fuck's going on here? I never do this. I never Whoa. look at money. I always just put the tip, yeah. sign, whatever. Fuck it. I don't want to look. I'm bad with money. I'm an idiot. Same. So I just went, how is this $100? I don't get it. So I did the math, and it was like twenty dollars plus twenty four dollars plus three fifty for a drink and sixteen for uh, dessert. We got dessert, ah. and I was like, "This adds up to sixty seven dollars." It says seventy seven dollars. Ooh. So I'm like, I never do this. I'm like, I did the math like six times in my head. We pull out the calculator. I'm like, Nah, this is crazy. Yeah. They added ten dollars. Oh, interesting. So I call the guy over, or maybe it was sixty two, and he put seventy two. Whatever it was, it was ten dollars off. So I said, I'm going to be a man here. And I said, pardon me, uh, sir. I, th this doesn't seem to add up. And the guy's like, no, no, it adds up. You're wrong. It's 72. And I'm like, it's 62. That tax will, will get you, though. It's a cum guzzler. Well, it says tax underneath. There's taxes on there. Okay, okay. So it's 62. Then the tax is six bucks or whatever. Uh -huh. And he's carry, He's doing long arithmetic or whatever you call it. He's like, <laughs> carry the three, stick up the six up your ass. And he's like, look at 72. Hmm. And I go... Pal, I don't know what to tell you here. 20 and 23 of 43. 43 plus 3 is 46 plus 16 is uh, 62 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And finally went, oh, I'm wrong. I'm crazy. I'm sorry. I'm an idiot. Wow. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's the whole story. But I felt so good. I good never look at the money. I never asked for whatever. But it felt so good. I was riding high. I feel like a man because I'm like, yes. they tried. And then I wondered, 
I wonder how often he does this. He just exactly. goes, oh, you just act with conviction. I'm an actor. He's an actor. You just go, oh, fuck. My God, I can't believe I did that. I'm so sorry. Do you think this twat was, was is this a, a scam he's got running here? I don't know. It might have been an honest mistake. I, I still gave him a 20% tip on the actual price, but man, I'm so glad I looked and checked, and I'm wondering how many times I got fucked on that. Good for you, because uh, I, I don't look at any of that stuff either, and I just checked. I was like, let me look at my bank account, see what's what. And you start seeing like... You had all these on the the, the activity, yep. the negatives. You're like, I don't remember buying that. Who the hell bought a kumquat, a dildo, a, and a poodle? Like, this is all. Then you call in. They go, Oh, sorry, we're gonna take that right off for you. Like, well, how many times is this happening in my life that I have no idea because I never checked the statements? I know. I, you gotta watch out for the hotels and comedy clubs because you put down the oh, uh, yeah. incidentals, incidental. and then the incident is that you paid for a hotel. Exactly. Exactly. And then they go, Whoops, sorry, our bad. We're like, what do you mean you're bad? That was seven hundred dollars. I I almost queefed right over. You fucked me. You got that right. Anyways, what a, what a wild episode Ooh, here. Topsy turvy turns and and twists. Yeah, we're shooting movies, we're doing pull-ups and uh by the way, join the Patreon folks. We're about to do a bonus. So many bonus. I mean, how many bonuses are on this Patreon? Well, we just kicked it up quite a bit of a notch and uh so many are coming out. Must queef TVs. Uh we did an extra queef the other week just for fun. We did a Zoom. We did an in-person. There's tons of content on the Patreon, and the patrons have shown it just with the upping of the uh, memberships. Yeah, we added a new 100 people. We went over 4,000, so keep joining. Let's get to 5,000, for God's sakes. If we get to 5,000, we'll 69 on the radio. You got that right. And, um, and who knows? Maybe we'll see this uh, picture you got cooking here with the thespian. I can't wait to see it. I can't wait to feel it. Mariano Dongo from uh, Peru. Uh, made a hell of a familia, or however you say film in Spanish, but uh, mm. it was pretty exciting. So join the Patreon and come see us out on the road, Paramount Theater, May 15th in Austin. Hell yeah. And uh, I got a bunch of other dates. I'm working on getting my website updated. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a loser, and I hate myself. But, uh, yeah, go check that stuff out. And uh, what else? Yeah, subscribe yeah. to the YouTube. Subscribe check to my out. YouTube, his YouTube. Go crazy. Yeah, check out our specials and whatnot. I got dates as well, markdomacowie.com. And, uh, yeah, tell a friend, queef it up, and praise Allah. Thank you, folks. Yeah.